This is my keyboard. There are many like it, but this one is mine. I've had it for about a month, month and a half now. Before this keyboard, I had a different keyboard, which I had for nearly seven years, which for me is pretty good because generally speaking, something gets spilled or something happens to that keyboard and it gets ruined. Damn. Ooh, a bit dusty that one. Well, whatever. This is my old keyboard. It's a Logitech G810. And I had it, like I said, for about seven years and it was a great keyboard. It met an unfortunate end. We had a little bit of a spill with this keyboard. So now that control key, uh, it just sticks on all the time. So finally, after seven years, I had to put this one to rest and order a new one. Now, I'm not incredibly picky, but I can be a little picky when it comes to keyboards. I like my keyboards a certain way. So I had a few requirements. The first one was wireless. Now I'm not some world-class gamer, and generally speaking, when I play on my computer, I'm not using my keyboard. Usually I'm leaned way back in my chair with my feet up on my subwoofer and I'm using my Xbox controller, just because that's how I like to play and it seems to work best for me. So latency issues with the wire, I'm not worried about that. My main concern when it comes to wires is my bird. Now I know most people out there don't own a bird, so they don't understand this problem, and I'd probably advise not to get a bird because they can be quite exhausting and time consuming. But the reason that cords and birds don't mix is because birds, or at least my bird, absolutely loves chomping down on a cord and eating it. This is a pair of Samson SR850s. Now, they're not expensive headphones. They usually run for about $35 on Amazon, but they do have really good quality, and they're the main headphones I use when I'm working on the computer. Now, uh, clearly, you can see there's some damage to that cable. Uh, that is from my bird. He absolutely loves chewing these. Okay, you can see chunks taken out of them there. He actually chewed through the entire cable and I did a really janky splice job to put it back together just until I could get a new pair. Now, this is the second pair I had and they're ruined. Here's the third pair that I've bought. As you can see, or maybe you can't, he's already started chewing the rubber around this part. So I got these little cable thingies on Amazon and they look like this, right? And you would think, oh, maybe you can just, maybe you could just slide the cable in there. No, 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 no. No, you have to individually hand wrap the cable. So like that, right? That little bit there took me probably 15, 20 seconds, not a big deal. But now imagine doing that for eight feet, for eight feet of cable, it takes a long time. I'm over it and I'm not willing to do it on a keyboard. Second requirement, I did not want a Bluetooth keyboard, or at least Bluetooth being the primary connection source to the computer. I have never had a Bluetooth keyboard that consistently connects and has no latency or any issues. They always seem to disconnect, they always seem to have some latency, missed keys, stuff like that, at least with PCs. Now I do have this little Logitech board, which is Bluetooth only that I use for when I'm working on my iPad, right? For whatever reason, it seems to work a lot better with the iPad than it does with the computer. For whatever reason, I have a lot of problems with Windows connecting with Bluetooth keyboards, so I just didn't want Bluetooth. My third requirement was I needed a full keyboard, meaning I needed the full 104 keys with a numpad. And don't get me wrong, I have keyboards that don't have a numpad. And actually, this is probably my favorite keyboard to type on and play with. It's got these really nice purple switches from Gatron, 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 whatever. You could easily spend $300 on a full mechanical keyboard that's hot swappable that, you know, it, it's easy to do. This is a fun keyboard. It's not a daily use keyboard. The last requirement I had when buying a keyboard was I wanted a mechanical keyboard. I didn't want any rubber membrane. I wanted a true mechanical keyboard with um, tactile switches. No rubber membrane keyboards. That's all I'm trying to say. So here's a nice cheap inland keyboard from Micro Center that I got years and years ago. And I don't really remember why. I probably went all rage quit on one of my old keyboards, snapped it in half, and I needed something for cheap. You can get these at Micro Center for literally like four bucks. And, uh, yeah, it's a keyboard and uh, that's about all I can say about it. It's not great. So after doing some research, I did, I settled on this Logitech keyboard. It's clean, it's simple, it matches my monitor, it looks good on my desk. It's also not too big. So it is a mechanical keyboard and what I ordered is not what I got. So when I ordered this from Amazon, I ordered the tactile version. I did not order the one with linear switches, which they sent me the linear one. Now, with that being said, I'm not that heartbroken about the switches. So that is my Logitech MX Mechanical Linear Switch Keyboard. It's a good keyboard, but here's the thing, it cost me $160. 
Now in the world of keyboards, that's not out of control. But to the average person who isn't a keyboard enthusiast, who doesn't really care about mechanical switches, who doesn't care about all the stuff we've talked about so far, $160 probably sounds crazy. I picture my mom or even my grandma, if I told them they needed a new keyboard and I told them it was going to be $160, they would lose it. So that got me thinking, you know, what is the world of cheap wireless keyboards like? So I figured I'd go on down to Micro Center and pick up a few. Micro Center is like the holy land for people like me. They have everything you could ever want. They have 50 different types of mice, 100 different keyboards. They got computer cases. They got every single thing you need to build a computer. They have pre-built, they got laptops. They even have Apple products, which, you know, literally it is the best place in the world to buy anything computer related. I mean, they have every cable you could need, anything you can imagine, they have it. And their staff is always really helpful and really friendly. Go to Micro Center, it is fantastic. So, like I said, I went to Micro Center and I went down the keyboard aisle and I just picked out four different keyboard and mice combos. And again, they were all wireless and I wanted them all to be below $50 because that seems like a reasonable price point to me for a good keyboard is $50. Coming in from the blue corner, weighing almost nothing, the Inland IC210. For those of you who don't know, Inland is the in-house brand of Micro Center. And there's nothing wrong with Inland. They actually make some pretty good products. In fact, one of my M.2s on my computer is an Inland brand storage drive. Now, <laughs> the first thing I noticed when I picked this thing up, how incredibly lightweight it was. And maybe that's just because I'm used to more mechanical keyboards with steel in them, stuff like that. And this thing is incredibly light. Like this thing is so light, I feel like I could sneeze and blow it off my desk. This beautiful keyboard here, weighs a staggering 495 grams, which uh, is only just over a pound, one pound, one ounce. So it's really, really light. If you wanna compare that to the keyboard, this keyboard, my new keyboard, which is nearly two pounds or 830 grams, it's a big difference. And when you pick it up, you can feel it. Anyway, back to the inland here. The second thing I noticed when I started to type it is the quietest keyboard I have ever heard in my life. Now, listen to this. Like, literally the quietest keyboard. And when I first started typing on it, I thought to myself, like, this thing might actually be great for when we're recording our podcast or doing something where we need it quiet for recording purposes. And I could use this, you know, to Google stuff and I wouldn't have to pick that up on my microphone and try and edit that out later, right? It's a nice quiet keyboard. So that was actually my first thought of it is like, maybe I will use this just for that kind of stuff. Now it is a very generic, basic keyboard. Like there is nothing special to this thing, which, you know, is a good thing because this plus a mouse cost me $14. I'll be honest, probably not your best investment choice. Um, this thing is horrible. It's absolutely terrible. I would say it worked about 25 to 30% of the time. It would randomly lose connection. It would not record my keystrokes half the time. If this thing is even slightly blocked or behind anything, forget it. It's not going to work and your keyboard will not connect to the computer. So yeah, uh, maybe stay clear of this one. And coming in at the red corner is the Cherry DW3000. For those of you who don't know much about mechanical keyboards, Cherry is like the father of modern day mechanical keyboards. Obviously, this keyboard is not mechanical and it is quite, quite light. Uh-huh. Oh, what did that other one weigh? 496. So yes, this keyboard is somehow lighter than the Inland. Now. Weight can be deceiving because this is a much, 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 much better keyboard than the Inland. For only $24.99, you can get this keyboard, a cheap mouse, and a dongle that looks surprisingly similar to the one from Inland. First things first, this keyboard is also very, very quiet. Not as quiet as the Inland, but quite quiet. I didn't have any of the connection problems that I did with the Inland one, so that's a good thing. The keyboard always worked, it always connected, it never missed any of my keystrokes or anything like that. Now, as for the keycaps, they have this kind of strange, I mean, it's not that strange, but the way they're curved here at the bottom, I really do not like. 
for whatever reason, the shape of these keys made me very inaccurate with this keyboard. And I really don't know why, but I just felt like I missed a lot more with this keyboard. And when I was testing it out using monkey type or on nitro type or anything like that, I did way worse with this keyboard than any of the others. Now I will say the feel of the key is actually quite a bit better than the inland. And this keyboard really does actually have a nice texture to it. I don't know what it is. It's kind of a, a little grippy or something like it take that Dorito dust right off your fingers and just hold on to it for the rest of its life. But truthfully, this is a much better keyboard and it's only $24.99. This is a 100% better upgrade over the inland. Also, I just need to point this out really quick. I find it hilarious how much these move and flex and stuff with just the littlest twist or even when you're typing and pushing, pushing on it, like the whole thing moves and you're just worried it's going to snap in half. Anyway, coming in at the green corner, we have one of the biggest names in peripherals. It's Logitech. Just like the others, it comes with a little dongle there and a mouse, and it's not a very good mouse. Now this one here was $29.99. We're stepping up $5 more from the Cherry model, right? Not worth the money on this one. I do kind of like the dedicated media buttons, your volume control, forward, back, pause. Do you have a frozen program on your computer and need to get a task manager quick? Well, the Logitech MK320 is the keyboard for you. Look at the size of this delete key. Now, I feel like, at least for me, when most people would go to Micro Center and pick out a wireless keyboard, they're gonna be looking for the Logitech brand because they have that name recognition. And going into this, I had hopes that this one would be the best keyboard. And I will admit, now I will admit, the keys themselves are okay. Now I will say, compared to the other keyboards, they feel a little rough going up and down. The, the motion on them isn't the smoothest. Now I did have some issues with the dongle and the wireless connection on this keyboard. At times, it would just not connect. Other times, I would be typing away, my words would stop showing up, I'd go like this a bunch, and then everything would go across the screen. It drove me nuts. Now, if you can put this dongle in a spot where it's gonna connect well and it's not blocked by anything, this keyboard is actually probably okay. It drove me nuts because I always put these in the back of my computer because I don't want to see them. I don't want to use my front USB ports with that. 585 grams. This is the heaviest one so far of these keyboards. I think it's just because of the size more than anything. It's got quite a big top piece here where the other ones don't. But yeah, it's a Logitech keyboard. It's okay. I wouldn't recommend it over the cherry though. In the yellow corner, we have the Microsoft Wireless Desktop 900. Looking at the keyboard, it is the most boring and generic keyboard out of the bunch. Now this keyboard with a mouse and of course a dongle, a bigger dongle than the other ones, was $34.99, $35. So it is definitely the most expensive one of the bunch. That extra $5 isn't giving you any extra character. A couple things that I didn't like about it is the spacing, it's really, really tight. With that being said, when you first pick this keyboard up, it's immediately more sturdy than the other ones. It feels rigid. You don't feel the deck flex as much when you're typing on it. And she weighs in at a hefty 513 grams. Not the heaviest one, but it's definitely the best feeling one. Now the keys themselves are the chiclet style key that you would see on a laptop keyboard, which, you know, is okay. Some people like it, some people hate it. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it works. Not a bad little keyboard. Hands down, this is my favorite one to type on. Um, I felt like when I was doing typing tests, that kind of stuff, it was my most accurate keyboard and my fastest keyboard that I used. Connectivity wise, I never had any issue. Just plug it in and it worked. I never had any problems with it disconnecting, missing keys, no lag, any of that. It's kind of hard to get excited about a $35 keyboard and mouse combo, but this one is definitely the best compared to the others. I can tell you right now that if I gave this keyboard to my mom to use for the next five years, she would have zero complaints with it. Yeah, so unbelievably, the most expensive keyboard is the best keyboard. I know, you're shocked. But with that being said, I'm actually pretty impressed with how good a $35 keyboard and mouse combo actually is. When I bought these four keyboards, I really did go into it thinking I wouldn't like any of them. And I have to admit, I liked two of them enough to where I would keep them and use them in certain situations. I would definitely keep this Microsoft one, as it is my favorite. The second keyboard I would recommend is the Cherry keyboard, which is a good thing because Cherry is a huge name in the keyboard industry. It's a pretty good keyboard that works all of the time and that's really all you can ask for when it comes to cheap wireless keyboards. Now for the other two. Like this one, like I said, throw it away, get rid of it. The Logitech. 
I wanted to like this keyboard so bad, and I didn't. I was so bummed out by the connectivity issues that I didn't even want to use it. Yeah, the keys feel okay, but the connectivity issues drove me insane throughout the week. So, no, don't buy this keyboard. Now, how does that compare to a $160 keyboard? <laughs> Let me tell you, when I switched back to this keyboard, I realized how much I actually do like the way this keyboard feels. But it's not for everybody. And to be honest with you, I would be just fine using this Microsoft keyboard for the rest of my life. Granted, I might miss this one, but I'd get used to the Microsoft and the cheap one and it works and that's all you can ask for in a keyboard. So like I said, there's absolutely no reason to spend $160 on a keyboard if all you're looking for is a generic keyboard that is gonna work, it's gonna connect, and it's gonna type. For the average consumer out there, there is no need to buy this keyboard. Or really this keyboard, or this keyboard. This one's okay, I actually, I like this one. I take it to work and it, it's actually a great keyboard to have in the car with my iPad. You can even spend $5 on a, on a keyboard and it's gonna be okay. So that's pretty much it. I really do hope you guys liked this video. If you did, feel free to leave a like, give us a comment, anything like that, and let me know how much you're willing to spend on a wireless keyboard. And if you like this style of video, where it's more just a talking hands kind of thing, touching keyboards, that kind of thing, let me know in the comments because I really don't know what kind of videos to make and I wanna make videos that people are gonna like. So let me know if you like this one. And don't forget, we got a podcast. We upload new episodes every Friday. Check that out if you like podcasts or like listening to people talk about farts. And as always, thank you very much for watching.